and welcome here to the Productive Homemaker. My name is Laramie, and here on my channel, I like to talk about frugal and intentional living. I hope that you are ready to cozy up with a good cup of coffee this morning or afternoon whenever you're watching this, because I want to have a conversation about grocery shopping, and what it means to be intentionally frugal over being cheap when it comes to feeding your family. I'm excited to talk, and if you enjoy my channel or you enjoy this content in the video, please like and subscribe, share with a friend that you think might find this useful or handy. Let's get into it. Frugal grocery shopping. Now, I know that many of us have been hit with the inflation that's been going on over the last few years, um, especially since 2020. As it sits right now, it's November of 2023, and inflation is out of this world when it comes to groceries. I know personally, my grocery budget has had to double in the last three years, not only because we added more children to our family, but just because the prices aren't the same that they were back three years ago. And with that rising cost comes the need to be more creative with what I have been purchasing and what I have been cooking for my family. A lot of people need to have a strict budget when it comes to their groceries simply for the fact that they don't have a whole bunch of expendable income to just throw to the grocery store to continue purchasing what they're used to eating. There seems to be a lack of education in teaching young families, young ladies, young men, how to cook with simple ingredients to make wholesome and nutritionally sound meals. And over the last decade, that has basically been my full-time job, other than being a wife and a mother. It has been learning how to cook properly within the constraints that my budget allows. I've never had a huge grocery budget. Um, for the longest time, our grocery budget sat at about $200 a month when it was just my husband and I and then our first two children. And as we added our third child back in 2020 when the world flipped upside down, we realized with the rising food costs that we had to then up our budget. And so we went up to $300 a month. Over the last two years since then, um, I have then had to add even more money to our monthly grocery budget. And right now I spend on average every month about $500 for our family of six to fill in the gaps to actually make the meals. And then I do about, about $100 a month total, give or take, um, by a few dollars for our pantry staples. So that includes like tomato products, flour, salt, sugar, baking soda, spices, things that should be in a solid working pantry to keep things going. Um, I've never had room for huge deep freezers to hold half cows or whole pigs. Um, we've always just had like a small deep freezer that would hold a deer or two. And then my regular freezer in a normal size, usually apartment sized fridge refrigerator combo. So there is no excessive pantry for me. I've really had to learn how to work with what's going on sale at grocery stores or learning to work what with what is always the cheapest options. And I wanna help you with that because I know it's hard. And I know the mental brain power it takes to have to learn all of these things on your own, it's not easy. So if maybe some of my tips might be able to help you, it might take off some of that mental load, then that'll make me really happy. So first thing when it comes to grocery shopping, I don't shop sales typically between taking care of my home and homeschooling and cooking and just doing everything that life needs from me at this point in time, I don't have the energy or the capacity to run to four or five different grocery stores. We live pretty rurally, so if we want to go to a grocery store 
that is not the small, tiny, local one in our little township, it is at minimum a half an hour drive. So I typically shop at Sam's Club and Aldi. The one thing I purchase at Walmart is my flour, and we'll get into the reason why. But I don't, I don't shop sales. I'll peruse them every once in a while, especially during the holiday months like November and December, to see if there's anything that I could add into my pantry staples. Get the sales of like different baking sodas, baking powder, spices, and, and also meat sales. November, turkeys and hams are always on sale. So that becomes the moment that I can add in extra meat at a lower price. But other than that, I don't shop sales. I don't do the rotating flyers just because I don't have, I don't have the time or the space or really the desire to do it. So that's the first thing. And I guess that breaks one of the frugal rules, doesn't it? To not shop the sales, that you're always supposed to shop the sales. I have found that using my local bulk grocery store, which for us in the area is Sam's Club, shopping there, saves me a large amount of money. They always have very solid prices. They don't fluctuate too badly with the inflation, but their meat prices can't be beat, even a lot of times with the sales that are going on in the area. I consistently find my chicken there for about $1.50 a pound or less for thighs and legs. Chicken breasts go on sale about every three months for under $2 a pound. Pork butts and pork tenderloin are always under $2 a pound. And their beef stays very stable also. Now, I don't typically purchase large cuts of beef just because it's not currently in the it's not currently in our budget to purchase large, beautiful roasts or ribs or things like that. But I do purchase ground beef and their prices don't tend to fluctuate on their giant pack of ground beef. So I shop at Sam's Club for the bulk of everything and I don't purchase a lot of different variety. I tend to stick with chicken thighs, chicken drumsticks. Every once in a while when there's a sale on chicken breasts I'll pick them up but since they don't come with bones I can't utilize them a second time. And then I usually get pork butts, pork tenderloin as well as ground beef. We do sprinkle in shrimp here and there. Um, sometimes we'll have fish, but again, those are very expensive when it looks at the cost of price per pound. And it's just not always in the budget because we need to make it stretch as far as we can currently. Another area that might become a ditch is trying to keep things as healthy as possible. Now we all know that GMO non-organic produce and non-organic meats are not the greatest option on the market. And it can be very difficult to be comfortable with not purchasing everything as an organic or non-GMO or grass-fed or whatever the new label is for this year. But when you're on a strict budget to feed your family, the best thing you can do is buy what is within your budget. Thank God for the provisions that he's providing us, bless the food and eat it. We can't continue to fall into this ditch of I have to spend $1,500 a month to feed my family when we don't have that type of money to be spending. On average, a family should be spending about 10% of their income every single month on groceries. And when that starts to creep up past that, that means that there is less margin for emergencies, for sinking funds, savings, investments, and things to keep your family financially stable. Now, I am 100% for eating the best quality foods that you can possibly get your hands on. But when you have just lost your job, or you have a small family, you're starting over your career, you're just beginning your career, you frankly can't afford to spend $1,000, $1,500 a month on food. It's not feasible, especially if you wanna hit financial goals. So what I usually recommend is to take an overall look at what you wanna eat. Take a look at how you eat, what you enjoy, what your family enjoys. 
and then we start breaking it down to figure out what is the best quality that we can purchase within our budget. For my family personally, I do not purchase any sort of bleached or enriched flowers. I have done a lot of research over the years and I do not purchase that to make our bread products for my family because I know that it is not the best quality product. But I also can't afford to import beautiful organic einkorn wheat to grind myself currently. That's also not feasible. So I have found myself using a King Arthur all-purpose unbleached flour to make all of our bread products. And it's a very solid middle of the road option. Another thing that I've done to help make things better for our family when it comes to eating the best quality is I've, I sourdough our bread. I ferment our bread to break down the gluten to make it easily, to make it more easily digestible for our bodies and to help make it the best quality product that, can, that I can offer my family within my budget. I don't purchase organic free range meats currently. Would I love to? Absolutely. Can I afford to spend 10 to $15 a pound on ground beef currently? No, I cannot. And now before I get comments about, well, you need to have a deep freezer and you can just purchase a whole cow or a half a cow, I am totally on board with that. But we have never been able to have the room for something like that. Now it's in the works, hopefully, that we can have something in the future. But when you have three children living in a 700 square foot apartment in two bedrooms, there is no room for a large deep freezer. And I wasn't about to purchase a storage unit to plug it in to do it that way. Not frankly that we couldn't, we couldn't even afford to purchase it if we wanted to at that point. We didn't have $3,000 or $2,000 to just put down on a, a half a cow. So if you can afford that, do it. The price per pound, if you can get a whole or half of a cow to put in a deep freezer, it is so much cheaper than going to the store to purchase it and it's better quality. So if you can afford it, I say do it. But if you are not in that position and you just simply can't do that, that doesn't make you a bad person to have to purchase conventional meat. There is a time and there is a place for it. And as long as we're moving forward to make the best quality products to feed our family from what we can afford, that's all we can do in the moment. And it's okay. So as the year ebbs and flows and the holidays come through, I do try to see if I can find things on sale when I go to Sam's Club. Um, so for example, right now, turkeys are on sale for about a dollar, I think it's a dollar fifteen a pound or a dollar twenty a pound. So my family will eat probably two or three turkeys over the next couple of months, not including the holiday them that themselves. Um, I like to purchase them and then I can grind up the meat to make my own ground turkey to put into our freezer for future meals. I use the carcass to make a bone broth, to make soups or to add into our rice, to add any sort of nutrition to whatever I happen to be cooking. And we'll enjoy the actual turkey roasted with vegetables or bread I can make sandwiches and pot pies and soups and all sorts of things with it. And it is the best deal in the month of November every single year. So don't be afraid to purchase an unusual thing or stick with the same four or five meats every single month and just learn to be creative with what you have on hand. I could probably cook a pork tenderloin 15 or 20 different ways with the same cut of meat. It just takes a little bit of creativity and skills to change it into something entirely different that your family will enjoy. The other thing that I think about when we're grocery shopping is you have to learn to eat seasonally. I recently put up a meal plan where folks had an issue with the lack of fresh vegetables and fresh fruits within it. And it was a, a meal plan for November. And my family eats very seasonally. So in November, my garden is dead, which means that we have no tomatoes, 
nor do we have cucumbers uh, or fresh bell peppers or anything like that because they don't grow in November in my state. I live in a mountainous region in Appalachia and we had snow on November 1st this month. So there's no tomatoes, no fresh tomatoes on my grocery list because we don't eat that in November. We eat those July and August and September. Um, there are no fresh strawberries on my list because strawberries are in season in June and July and August. So therefore, when you get something in November that is actually grown in June or July, and it's a fresh product like a berry, it is traveling thousands of miles to get to your grocery store. It's being picked off the vine when it's still green and unmatured, so it doesn't get the ability to mature and fully get the nutrient profile from the soil that it's being grown in. You're paying a premium for a, honestly, a half par product, and it's not worth it for the price per pound, for the amount of gas that goes into bringing it to your table. It's just, it's not worth it, and it's not how we're meant to eat. So in November, Basically, from November until April or May, we eat a lot of potatoes and cabbage and onions and squash like butternut or spaghetti squash, um, pumpkins, things like that. You also have the option, if you don't enjoy squashes, you can include frozen vegetables. The great thing about frozen vegetables is that they are flash frozen at, at peak ripeness. So they are picked in season and then they go through and they are frozen in that peak season. So you're getting the best nutritionally sound product for pennies on what you would be paying for the half par fresh produce that is in the produce section in December. We eat seasonally and that's very important to me because I want to make sure that every penny that leaves our bank account to feed us is going to the best nutritionally sound product it can. And strawberries in November and December are not it. Now, something I do purchase every single month when it comes to staple items for produce and things like that are apples and bananas. I know that my kids enjoy those and they are cheap. So it's okay to add those in. But if you want to enjoy a good salad, get a garden bed and grow it. And if you can't do that, go to your local farmer's market. But you have to go in the spring, in the summer, in the fall. Because typically, unless you have a cold frame, lettuce does not grow in January. It freezes. Kale grows in January, but not lettuce. So learning to eat with your seasons is going to make sure that you're eating the best food year round. And that means that your menu is going to change as the year goes on. Whenever you're working within a specific budget and you can't move away from it, the best thing that we can do is look for quality products that fit our budget and our family. I talked about flour. Another good example that I like to give is our pasta that I choose to purchase. You could purchase the bottom of the barrel Barilla pasta, but if you ever take a look at the back and the ingredients that are in there, and they're not the best. The enriched flour that's been bleached, the preservatives and things like that. And so I could purchase a pound of Barilla pasta for 99 cents on sale, or I could do a little bit of digging and find an imported pasta from Italy at one of my local grocery chains here. And its only ingredient in it is semolina. Now, it's not organic. It's nothing special in, in the realm of Italian pastas. But the difference between that brand and the Barilla brand is that the regulations in which the wheat is held to in different countries is completely different. In Italy, and I know this from looking it up, but in Italy, they don't use GMO crops. 
They also don't spray down their wheat fields with a whole bunch of awful pesticides. So for twice the price at $2 a pound, I can purchase a much higher quality product that is not going to give ill effect to my family. So that's really important to me is I really try to choose quality products and staple products for us to consume that fit the budget. That might not mean organic grass-fed meats right now, but that does mean good flour, good pasta, decent rice, um, and those really big staple foods that help bulk up our meals. So when it comes to cooking and grocery shopping, that helps me be intentionally frugal over being cheap, is learning these traditional skills that were once common knowledge. Learning how to make my own bone broth, from the scraps of the carcasses that I use, like those drumsticks and chicken thighs, the pork bones within the pork butts. All of those are repurposed and used to make broths that add extra nourishment to our potatoes, into our rice, to making soups to go with our fermented sourdough breads. It's all about what I can do to produce the best product for my family from what's been laid in front of me. Uh, more traditional skills would include garden, gardening, which I know not everybody has the ability to have a big garden. This year was our first really big, like real garden. Um, and we grew, you can see back here on my hatch, we grew our own squash patch with pumpkins spaghetti squash and butternut squash and these little adorable delicata squashes we grew a for the first time a measly little patch of potatoes that we enjoyed um we grew so many tomatoes and cucumbers to snack on which was absolutely amazing and so it's a learning process i don't support my entire family's produce needs on my garden but i'm learning how to so if you have the space to garden, I recommend learning to pick up that skill in garden. If you don't have a ton of space, you can still grow herbs. You can do sprouting microgreens, which I'll show you later this winter on your windowsill. But these traditional skills of fermenting flour products and soaking grains, soaking beans, and making things like soups and broths as nutritionally dense as we can, that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck whenever you're doing your grocery shopping. Because for me, I'm not going to look at that chicken breast twice if I can get three times as much product from the chicken thighs or chicken drumsticks. Because I'm not just looking at the meat, I'm looking at the bones also that I need. And I can make such a delicious meal from a couple of chickens and their bones with root vegetables in a fermented bread that is astronomically better for you than eating anything that the supermarket can provide in their frozen section. So it's really, really important to take up cooking as a hobby, basically, especially if you can't afford to have somebody else come in and cook for you. And probably my last grocery shopping tip here is going to be having an attitude and heart of gratitude for what you can have. Times are really hard right now. People are struggling with trying to buy and put food on the table. We need to have gratitude for the provisions that are given to us that we do have to work with. You might not be able to purchase all the super high-end products that you want to, but you have the money to fill bellies. And that is such a blessing that we should not be forgetting about. And your money will go so much farther when you have a happy heart about what you can afford and a happy and joyful attitude about the work you get to do in your kitchen to feed your family the best you can. It will make you go so much farther and it'll also make it a lot more enjoyable. So just a, a gentle recap here. Have a budget. Learn to stick with your budget. If your budget is small, start learning how to do quality within your means. 
So that means looking at the, the best products that you can afford within the means that you have. That might not mean super organic, wonderful meat, but that does mean you can eat better starch products to make meats and other things stretch. You can make things as nutri nutritionally sound and dense as possible within your budget. Make sure not to fall into all of these ditches when it comes to organic health traps. I know we all want what's best for our family, but it's not going to help our family if we overstretch our budgets to get all of the things that we think we need rather than just learning to work with what we have. Gaining traditional skills, so learning how to bake bread from scratch and learning how to soak things and how to cook soups, doing these skills and learning these skills is going to go a long way in helping you. And that gratitude, make sure that you're checking your heart posture at the kitchen door and at the grocery store shopping line. You are going to do your family well, so well, if you take what you have with a smile on your face and to be thankful for it. The next episode here, I'm going to be giving you an example of a two-week meal plan for my family that we would be using in the month of November. And just to give you some ideas on what you could do to work with a small amount of cuts of meats and to just make a meal plan that is delicious but frugal. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, let me know what your thoughts are or if you have any tips that you would add. And I will talk to you soon. All right.